everybody. <laughs> Welcome to this week's live q and I'm here with Stephanie Fahrenbach. Hello. Hello. And uh, I think most of you are tuning in because you have heard us talking about the fact that Steph is going to give us a live watercolor lesson right now, which is awesome. Um, but before we start, Steph, can you just give us a little rundown of who you are, what you do and all that kind of stuff? And then we're going to yeah. talk about a couple exciting announcements before we get started, too. Okay, sounds good. So hi, everybody. Um, so I'm Steph, and I am a professional artist, and I'm also a teacher. So I work in oil and watercolor, um, but I teach watercolors in in-person workshops and online. And I've been painting forever since I was like a little kid, and um, I've been professionally doing it for the last six years. And yeah, I mean, how much do you want me to go into? I could talk forever. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's good. So um, yeah. a little bit of the backstory for people who don't know. Um, okay, Steph yeah. and I met on Instagram, actually, a couple yeah. years ago. Steph had just posted yeah. her work and I loved it. And I realized she was also in Canada and not too far from me, like maybe five, five or six hours away from here in Ottawa. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. uh, I just sent her a message and said, I love your work. We should do a workshop together. <laughs> and then yeah. we <laughs> And the rest yeah. is history. And now we have I done know. a couple online courses and some in-person workshops together. And now we're doing these live videos. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, I was thinking the other day how crazy it is, like how we've started doing these online things. And it all started with a Christmas ornament, which is just really, really fun. I love yeah. that. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, so for people tuning in, tell us where you're tuning in from. Say hello and we'll be able to see where you're tuning in from, which is always fun. Um, but I think that we should, so I had a couple people tell me that they weren't gonna be able to tune in for this whole video because of course everyone is around the world. Some people are in a totally different different time zone and can't tune in for a whole one hour lesson right now. Um, and so they wanted to know what our surprise was before we get started. We said we were gonna announce it at the end, but I think to be fair to people who can't tune into the whole thing, we should just, go ahead and say what it is. So do yeah. you want to do you want to talk about that stuff? Okay. So you guys, we have a so I'm really excited. We have a new book. I have we have a new book that's coming out that's all holiday florals. Yay. Um so Christmas is my favorite time of year ever. So I was um really really excited to work on this. There's a whole set of I think it's 16 brand new flowers, like things that I've never taught before. So if you've got my other books, um, if you do know of my classes that I've done with Becca or on my own, this is completely new stuff. Um, so I'm really, really excited to show you guys. Um, so we'll kind of give you some previews of it at the end. Um, but yeah, it's um, it's everything's going to be broken down as usual. There's video tutorials and step-by-step -step instructions on how to make everything. We still, um, it does though, it's really just a, something to touch on is this actually dives into flowers right away. So this lesson that we're doing right now is really important to touch on because I'm going to go through all the basics with you guys. So you'll kind of learn those techniques that you're going to apply in this book if you decide to get it at the end. Yeah, yeah. So for anybody watching who knows of Steph already and knows that her and I have done some collaborations together for workbooks, we've done two workbooks in the past together. So different floral arrangements. We did one that was a floral bouquet. We did one that was a floral monogram. And so both of those workbooks are still available too. And now we're adding this third holiday edition workbook to the mix. So um, we just wanted to let you guys know what that surprise was and the link for where that workbook can be found is on the screen right now. So if you can't watch this whole lesson and you know you're gonna wanna get it, you can go get it right now. But if you're watching this lesson, I suggest you just wait till the end. We'll give you time to go get it. We'll tell you a little bit more about what's inside. And also um, the last element to that is that all three of the workbooks are now on 50% off sale for the rest of the week. So we'll talk a little bit more about that at the end, but um, yeah, you'll be able to grab all of them at 50% off or just the one if you've already bought the other ones and, and all of that fun stuff. So um, hopefully you guys are excited about that because we are. And I, when Steph sent me this workbook, I straight up said to her that I think this is my favorite one yet. I love the flowers. Aww, that are in it. I, I mean, to be fair, I love Christmas more than anything in the world. And so anything that's like yeah. holiday related, Christmas related, just like makes my heart so happy. So I was so happy to get it. <laughs> Um, yeah, but one thing yeah. I do want to mention about it just real quick is that I've sort of incorporated traditional um, Christmas stuff, but also non-traditional stuff. So there's kind of you can make different combinations that will work outside of holiday, too. So you can apply it for different things. 
And I know we said we were just going to talk about this at the end and show you what was inside, but like sneak peek, this is the wreath that you make at the end. And the color on my printer is really horrible. So I apologize for that. But just so you guys can see what we're actually going to be creating in that workbook, little sneak peek. And we'll show you a little more of what's inside at the end of this video. But um, like Steph said, everything um, in this live video today is the basics of watercolor painting, which is going to be really important if you want to buy any of the further workbooks, because those ones dive right into flowers. And if you've never learned the basics of watercolor before, it would probably be a little bit overwhelming. So without further ado, I think we should just get right into the lesson and yeah yeah so maybe if you want to start by showing us the supplies and everything because I know that people get really bogged yeah. down by that no definitely so I'm just gonna move it so it's overhead so you guys can see what I'm doing can okay so the first thing that? let's talk about is paint so I really love these Cotman um watercolor tube paints and I just like these because you can just squeeze out a little bit of paint at a time and just use what you need and all you need to do is just squeeze a tiny little bit and you can always add more if you need to. You can add that to your palette and that what you do you can add your water to this from your containers. So there's those palettes and there's this one. This is my green. So don't worry about the colors if you've chosen, if you're painting along with me now, don't worry about the colors you've chosen. I've used red and green because it's holiday and we can make some really great things out of just two colors. But um, yeah, we can just learn the same techniques if you're not using the same colors. But I really like these paints because um, they last a really, really long time and um, they're really vibrant right out of the tube. So you can usually get watercolor and lots of different options if you can get dried palettes that come in a little kit that you just add water to and those are great too but I just find I really like these two paints because they're kind of liquidy and wet out of the tube and it makes it really nice for mixing um, yeah so those are the two colors of paint and then this is just my regular cheap plastic palette that you can get at any art store or Michaels whatever you you know, it's pretty easy to find these sorts of things. I like these palettes because um, you can find a lot of different wells for mixing. I generally use something a bit bigger in my normal practice just because I like a bit bigger of a well for mixing my colors. But if you're mixing and you, you know, you run out of space, you can always wipe out things with your paper towel and, and have some empty space there. Um, okay, and then our brushes. So this is the two snap brushes that we're using. They're called, they're by Princeton and they're called snap brushes. Um, they're round synthetic brushes with a short handle and a pointed tip. Now um, that might sound like a lot of things, but basically when you go to the art store and you're looking for um, brushes, they will have different sections for the different kind of painting that you wanna do. So if you look for the watercolor section, that's what you're looking for. And that means that they're kind of a softer bristle brush because we're painting um, fairly delicately. You want something that has soft bristles rather than um, something that has sort of animal textured hair, um, which would be a bit scratchy on your surface. So this is very, very soft. It's kind of like a makeup brush, sort of like that's how it feels. It's just synthetic like that. And um, it's round, so the actual um, brush here at the end is circular in shape. And that's important because when we're doing our flowers, we're creating these curved petal shapes. And so that shape of the brush is important rather than having just sort of a flat straight edge. That curve allows us to create these shapes. And I also like the pointed tip that comes on these brushes because I, when the brush is wet, it's a little bit more pointy. And you can get these really fine details just using the tip of your brush. So it's kind of like drawing with a pencil. And um, that's why I like that pointed tip. So that's a size six, which is sort of like a medium size. And this is a size zero, which is my, the same sort of brush. It's just a smaller, a smaller size. It's just smaller. So it's like good for details and making really fine, you know, little berries and things like that or little stems for your, for your leaves. And um, so these are the two brushes that I'm recommending for this. And they're actually going to be used in the main workbook that we're selling later. Um, it's the two brushes that I would recommend the most to get. Um, so usually you want to start with like a medium size and then a small size for details. And then if you want to build on that, you can get bigger again. So like a size 10 or a 12 and then even bigger, like a 20, 16, different sizes like that. Um, don't be too concerned with the number that's on the brush. Um, basically, you just want to look for a small, medium, large, those kinds of things, because, um, you know, sometimes in the art store, whatever might be available, maybe you'll get a size two is available, but not a size zero. And that's OK. Just get the smallest you can find for your detail and then sort of a, a little bit larger one for your, your next size up. OK. And the short handle just means that it's easier to hold. These come in longer handles as well, but it's just easier when you're painting to hold if it's not super, super long. 
Okay, so that's that. The paper that I recommended is cold press and it's 140 pounds. So that just means that, um, so watercolor paper comes in different surface textures. This is a Winsor & Newton um, cold press pad. And the cold press just means that it's sort of a medium texture because you can get a hot press paper, which is watercolor paper, and that's a totally smooth surface, which is kind of like a bristol board sort of surface, a very heavyweight bristol board. Um, I don't use that as much for my painting just because it doesn't absorb the water as fast. It kind of sits on top a little bit more and I prefer to blend with something like this. So the cold press has a little bit of a texture on the top. You can kind of feel it with your hands. And you can also get a rough press, um, which I just never use because it's really, really bumpy and we're painting sort of delicate florals here and you don't want to see a huge, huge amount of texture on your, on your painting. So this is kind of the happy middle. Okay, so um, I also use different um, brands of paper depending on what I'm doing. This Windsor & Newton pan is, pad is sort of like my practice pad. This is um, sort of where I'll do my studies and tests and things before I move on to good copies. I really love arches when I'm doing my good copies just because it's, um, it is an expensive paper, but it's totally worth it. And I'll get into this a bit more with my other videos, but um, basically the paper I say makes the biggest difference in your loose florals um, because it just makes all these sorts of blends. This practice sheet was done on a small sheet that I've, I've cut. It just really makes these blends and things a lot more even and you don't find as many watermarks that you would when you're using a more inexpensive paper. Um, so there's other qualities about it that I really love, but um, for right now, we're just using just any paper that you can find that's 140 pound cold press, that's fine. Okay, and then the other thing is water containers. So I just like to use two big mason jars. Any two glasses that you have will work. You just wanna fill them with water almost to the top, like leave a little bit of space. And the reason I use two is that um, I use one for mixing my colors all the time. So if you're mixing your, you know, you're washing off your brush, you can leave one for that. And another one I leave clear because it's um, really, really good for blotting mistakes. So I'm gonna just show you real quick. This is what we do first. So we never just apply our watercolor paint directly to our paper without mixing any water in. This is what happens if we don't have any water. It's just kind of scratchy and goes along our surface and it doesn't really blend nice on our paper. So what you wanna do is wet your brush first and I just kinda of go like this to remove the excess and then you can dip it in your palette. Just dip the tip into the paint and I make a little well in the center and I call these puddles because I'm literally making a puddle in my palette. So that's just how we kind of add the water and paint and make our mix, make sort of a, a mixture on our palette that we're gonna add to our paper. So you always do your mixing on your palette and then you add it to your paper. So this is what I call loading the brush. So I'm just sort of swirling it around, getting the paint and water mixed on my palette and just adding it to my brush. And when you're ready, you can just sort of spread it across your paper like this. We're gonna start with sort of the darkest color first. So if you wanna just start with your color where with just a little tiny bit of water, and this is basically what the color looks like right out of the tube. It's pretty dark, nice and saturated color red, right? That's a nice Christmassy red. And so I'm just making a little swatch on my paper. You guys can do this too and follow along. We're just getting used to our paint and how, um, the water just affects the colors. Just by adding water, we can lighten or darken a color um, depending on how much we have there. So that's just what the paint looks like out of the tube. If we wanna lighten it a bit, just like here, I had a little bit of paint and I've mixed water into it, a little more water, swirl it around in the center and you can apply it next to it and see how it's lighter. So all I want you to do is just practice this. I know it seems really simple, but it's actually really important because you're not going to change your colors by mixing white. Like if you've ever painted with a different style of medium before, when we're doing these florals, we're just lightening our colors using water. So a slight little difference of water, I'm just dipping my brush into my water and adding it to my mixture to lighten and just swirl it around and just keep adding these little squares and just see how little paint you really need. Add some more water. See how little paint you really need just to make it a lot lighter. 
So the same red also turns into this really soft pink just by the addition of water. So I just say like, I just usually describe this as diluting my colors. And let's just do one last one like this, okay? So I hope you can see that on the video, but that's like the very, very palest um, peach color that you've got out of this red. So I haven't mixed any other colors in, I've just used red for that. So if we want to try that with our green, just to give ourselves a good idea of how that works, I'm just gonna use some paper towel and wipe this out. And I also actually, yeah, I'll show you blotting while I'm doing this. So I'm just washing off my brush and going like this on my paper towel to make sure that all the color is gone. And we're gonna go straight into our green. So I'm still gonna get my brush wet and just go like this on my container so that it's not dripping and go into my green. And then I can add that right to my page and do the same thing. So this is what the green looks like right out of the tube. Okay, and then we can do the same thing by adding a little bit of water to our mixture. Can add a little bit of green there and see how it just gets different as it's getting lighter with more water. Like this. So add some more. And keep adding some water. So this becomes like a very, very soft, pale mint green. Right at the end, once I've added as much water as I kind of can. So there's very, very little paint on my palette. It is so, so faint, but it makes really pretty pastels. Okay. So, so Steph, we, we, had, color. we have a question from somebody who yeah. asked if, um, if they're using... Uh, not watercolor tubes, but the palette versions of watercolors. Do they yeah. need to make a so well of color? A, yeah, so that's totally fine. Um, the palette versions, all it means, so one thing I didn't mention is I do like these tube paints because they're wet right out of the tube, but you, if you have extra on your palette, you can let them dry on your palette and re-wet them later. So that's the exact same thing as those dried palette paints. They're basically dried paint that comes in a puck that you add water to. So the only thing that you'd have to do is swirl around your brush on the palette a little bit more to get the pigment, enough pigment on your brush. So it takes a little bit more effort um, to get a deeper color, I find, just because you really just have to swirl in the water and re-wet it before you can apply, where this is very, very um, saturated um, out of the tube. But they're both great. So it's, um, does that make sense? I think that yep. answers the question. Yeah, so, so that's our two colors. And then I just wanted to show you some blotting so if we have I didn't get a chance to show you guys this so if you I do like to paint sort of around I start my colors around this end of our spectrum so I usually start lighter when I'm working with a flower and then I can add color on top of it later which I'm going to show you but if we want to kind of erase a mistake or you're just not sure about what you just did if we have say a little bit of red on our palette and I was painting a flower and I wasn't sure I liked that you can always dip, this is why we keep the clear container, dip some pa clean paper towel into your water. Not too much, but just a little bit. And then you can just blot and just tap. It's like sort of just dabbing the top of your paper. And that's how we can blot and erase in um, watercolor painting. So that has to be done sort of while quickly while it's still wet or else you won't be able to get it up. Um, and it works better when you're working with a lighter color. If it's darker color, it's harder to, to remove all the, the paint. Okay. Steph, we have another so, question here. So um, yeah. someone is asking about, you know, when your watercolor swatches will dry and there's like a hard edge around the color. Is mm -hmm. that, um, she said she doesn't see that on yours. How does that, what is that? Why is that happening? So those are two things. One, um, I have a little bit of one here. It's um, just really faint. One is the paper makes a huge difference. The a higher quality paper, you're not going to see that line as much like on an arches, even this Windsor and Newton. It's very good paper at um, evening out the water. So it all kind of dries instead of pooling in one area. But if you have too much water 
So if you're like layering and it's really pooling on top like this, rather that's sort of more where you're gonna get the line because as the water dries, it's just kind of like gonna spread out and pool around the edges and that creates this harder line around the outside where you have, a, if you have slightly less water, so say you can just sort of dab some of the excess on your paper towel and have a little less sitting on top like this, see how there's a difference? That's sort of an even a bit of a, I call it the sheen where you see the light it reflects on the water on top of the paper, but it's not pooling like this is. See? So that, that's where you're gonna get the line and you won't have as much of a line in this kind of scenario. Okay. Um, so yeah, so that's adding our water to lighten a color. And now I'm going to show you how, this is what I call the tapping technique. So this is how I'm layering some shading and colors one on top of the other. So I'm going to start with my red. And let's make a little puddle. Okay. And you're just going to make another little swatch on your paper. There's lots of squares that we do at the beginning when we're learning our techniques, but we do get into the real fun stuff later. So I just make sort of my base layer. So anytime I'm painting, I like to start with the shapes first and I call that the base layer where I've just got this sort of wet area of shape on my paper and then I layer the colors in over top. So that's my base layer. And then to add a bit of shading, I'm gonna dip my brush directly into my red paint and then I'm just gonna tap the tip of it in the corner and just go up and down like this and you'll see that it starts to gradually go into the shape. And it just is, as it's gonna dry, it spreads out and then it starts, once it's dry, it kind of looks like this, where you get this gradient of color where it's deeper in one area and then it gets lighter. So that's one way I really like to add some shading detail to my flowers. So if you see in this anemone here, there's a little bit of a darkness towards the center that's gone out. That's where I've tapped my color. We'll get into that later. So that's tapping and you can do that with more than one color. So we're just using red and green today, but you could use, you know, like a little peach and then and you could add a little green in there if you wanted. So it's just, just to just experiment with your colors and have some fun with that. That's tapping. And then the next thing I wanna show you is color bleeds. So this is where, if I'm gonna show you my example here, this is where two colors have been placed next to each other and they're bleeding into each other so that the colors are kind of merging the shapes together. And you can see this on my example here where I've touched these two flowers together and then there's this been a slight bleed where they just sort of like connect and merge. And I really like to do that in my paintings. I think it just makes the bouquets, it gives it that something extra. It just makes it look like everything's connected and um, really like a harmonious composition. So. Here's a color bleed for you. So I'm just washing off my brush, going back to my red. Let's mix a little bit of water there. And I'm gonna start with another swatch. It's another little square. Like this. And again, just like here, we're not having our water pool. It's just sort of like an even, film of water and I liked it once I've made my shape I usually go over it with my brush just like this and that spreads the water over the surface so that it's more even when you're blending things together so then I'm washing off my brush here and then I'll go into my green and I can just mix another well here and then what I'm going to do is just I've loaded my brush with paint and I'm going to run the tip of it along the side of my red and then just spread back and forth. Okay, and then complete my shape. So that's just where color bleeds. See the red is just starts going in to where the green is. And then as that dries, you're gonna get this really nice um, sort of effect that where the, the red really blends into the green. Okay, so this, um, I just wanna show you a few different examples. So if you, this, if you were using too little water, something to practice, if you were hardly using any water on your brush, just so this is like green with hardly any water. And so then we would then move into a red with hardly any water. 
the head. Oh, I still had too much water. Okay, well, here's a deeper bleed. I need to dry off my brush. So that's that's like with a deeper color. Let's try that again. So if we have a drier brush, so just a tiny bit of water, it's not going to bleed as much. Okay, let's put this in here. So this is drier and you're going to see that it's not really going in like these two were a little bit wet. These were sort of even. It's just kind of staying in one spot because my colors are a little bit drier. So it's not really blending the same way. And if you have it too wet, so really pooling where there's like a giant puddle on the top of your paper, that's where the colors are really going to bleed a lot. Okay, so these this is really pooling on the top of my paper. And see how that's just gonna, as that dries, let's add a bit more water. If you have too much, it's really just gonna start pooling. So that's just things to look out for when you're painting because um, water consistency and how much water to use is probably one of the number one questions that I get when I'm teaching um, because it's one of those things that sort of takes a little bit of time for your hand, for your muscles to get used to it. Um, but hopefully this will help you a little bit. If you try doing too much and too little, it sort of will teach you, teach your hands how to find that sort of happy medium. Um, so neither of these are, nothing, none of this is wrong. It's just different effects, right? Like maybe you end up doing an abstract piece or something, you want it to bleed a lot or not a lot, depending on uh, what you want. But just be aware of how much water you add and how the, if that really affects your paintings. Okay, so let's make some mixtures. Uh, so I liked that we're only using two paints, but we can get some really interesting colors out of just those two paints. Um, this is, um, I don't think I actually gave you the names because you're just looking for red and green, but this is a cadmium red deep hue, and this is an intense green or a phthalo green. Um, so those are two of my favorite colors. And out of the two, we see that they're very kind of bright and primary colors. They're very, you know, kind of stand out, but we can also mix some really nice burgundies and emeralds and um, pale sort of more pastel neutral tones just out of those two colors. So I'm going to move this actually so that we have a fresh slate. Okay. Okay, so let's mix a palette. Does anyone have any questions so far? Uh, it looks like we are good for questions so far. Good. Okay. Amazing. Okay. So for this painting that I wanted to show you, we're going to start, I usually when I'm making a work I, uh, or a composition, I like to sort of decide a little bit on the colors that I'm going to go for at the beginning. So I'll usually make a sort of test sheet to the side of what I'm working on with the color mixtures that I've done. So it's a nice idea when you have, um, like in our final workbook that we'll be showing you later, it has more colors than just these two. It shows a more of a full palette. Um, and it's really, and I do a lot of color mixing in my work and I think it's really nice to see and just practice how many colors and how much fun it is to um, use and make different unique combinations that you couldn't just get if you were buying a tube on its own or a palette that's already mixed. You can really create a lot of your own interesting colors. Um, so we start with just a true red. So I'm just going to make a little square at the top. And that's just my red right out of the tube. Okay. Now, if I've got kind of a nice amount of red in my palette, when I'm making deeper colors, we're going to make this burgundy color. When I'm making darker colors, I like to use more paint on my brush. So you can really sort of scoop out a little bit more red onto your palette like this. And then just wash it off, dab it with your paper towel, and then you're going to scoop a little bit of green. Okay, and mix that into your red. Okay, so depending on how much you added, this now color mixing is a little bit of play. You're not always going to get the same the color you're going after with your first mixture. There's a lot of back and forth sometimes until you find the one that you want. So this is a bit of a brown. So I'm just going to wash off again and add a bit more red to it. But see how much the green has deepened that red, just a little bit of green. So I'm just going to swoosh in my red and adding that little bit of extra deepened my red. So it's more of a burgundy red 
and less of that brown color. So there's much more red and a little bit of green to make that color. So feel free to keep, you know, if it's too red and not dark enough, you can add a little bit more green. If it's more green and not red, just keep adding some more red to it until you sort of land on this darker color. So I'm just scooping it into my brush and I'm gonna draw a little square beside it to give me that burgundy tone. Okay, so I'm just gonna show you a little more play. Like if you, you can keep adding green, keep adding red. I'm running out of paint, so let's add a little more. Okay, so you can keep going back and forth until you get that color that you're really looking for. Okay, so that's our burgundy. And then we can actually lighten that burgundy. So just take a little bit of that, maybe in a new well. That's what these palettes are great for. You can start mixing all these, a new color in all these little different areas. So I'm just pulling a little bit of this color on my brush into a new well and then adding water to it. Okay, so it's very diluted. And then if it's too much water, you can just dab it a little bit on your paper towel and then add it to your palette, just like this. Okay, so there's that faint sort of pastel pink that we got out of that burgundy color. And now we can move on to our green. So I'm just gonna scoop out, actually we can leave this burgundy here. Okay. So we've got this burgundy, which we've mixed with red, with more red and less green. Um, but we can also make a really deep green by adding more green and less red. So maybe it's easier if I switch, if I start from the beginning. Okay. So we can start with a little bit of green like this. And I'm just scooping a bit into the center, wash off. And we're gonna add less red this time and move that, swirl that around in the center of our palette. So same two colors, but we've managed to make completely different mixtures just by adding more of one and less of another. Okay, so that's like a really nice rich foresty green. You could change it again. You can keep adding more green if you want it different. Okay. Maybe a little bit more red again. Okay, and then you can add that to your palette. There's our sort of forest green color. And then I love mixing different greens. And so this one, so we've made these four colors and now we're gonna move on to these um, different sort of lighter green shades, which are nice to add to your paintings and even it out. So this is sort of a gray green color. So by adding, so we've got our nice sort of ev evergreen green. So if we wanna just add a little bit more red to it, it, kind of grays out the color slightly. So it's a little bit different again. And then we can add a little bit more green to it as well and change our color. Now, if we lighten it, we just add a little bit of water. There we go. And we can add that to our palette mixture. So same two colors, but we've added slightly a bit more water to change the color again. And you can add some more red. So it's a bit more gray. Add more water to make it pale and make another one. Okay, so that's almost all our greens. The final green that I did was just straight green out of the tube, but I've diluted it with water. So I'm just gonna take out my mixture here and go back just to my green, but only a slight bit of color on my brush. And I'm gonna add some water to that so that it's very pale. And then we'll add our swatch at the top. So that's our full palette. So these are all the colors that I'm gonna use in my painting. And then I like to have that reference at the top. So remember it's like 
remember my mixtures and you can always write what you did to, to make each one if that makes it easier for you. So if we don't have any questions, we can get started right on some of the fun stuff. <laughs> the, uh, the pine branches, which are great for Christmas. So I'm moving on to my size zero brush here. So I find it's easier to do those detail works with um, your little detail brush, but you could also use the tip of your size six brush. Some people like working with a larger brush. Some people prefer um, more control with a smaller one. So it's really up to what feels best to you. So I'm just gonna wipe out my palette and we can get started. So just dip your brush, this is size zero, dip your brush in the water. And we're going to use a bit of green and a bit of red. And we're kind of making that brownie green color. So just go back and forth between your mixtures. And I've got kind of a nice brown. Okay. So once you've got this brownie green color, you're going to start with the stem of your pine. So basically you're going to do, I'm using the tip of my brush. And one thing when you want to think about when you're watercolor painting is you don't want to press hard. I'm very delicate and hardly touch my brush very much to my paper. It's very, very gentle and light. You don't really want to smush it in like this. You want to use the tip and be very delicate with it. Okay. I also find I move a little bit quickly while I'm doing this. If I just go slow, sometimes my lines are more wobbly and labored looking. And I find it looks more natural when you try to just go with the flow and be a little more quick with things. Okay, so I've made a little stem here. And you can try to like make it a little bit thicker at the bottom if you want. So that it's, you know, a branch has a wider space at the end. And then we're going to go, I'm going to add a little bit of water to my mixture to lighten it up and add a little bit of green. Okay, so we have more of a gray green color happening. And just add some water to it so it's lighter. I usually like to start with my lighter colors. And then we're just gonna make a series. I'm gonna touch, I'm touching the tip of my brush to my stem and I'm pulling out quick little lines and I'm doing them in different directions so that they overlap. So we're just gonna do this on one side all the way up like this and just overlap them. The messier you are, the more natural it looks, I find, especially with pine branches. And you're just going to keep layering those lines. And then you can do the same thing on the other side. So I went part way up my stem so you see the end of it there. And just pull out your greens like this. Okay, so once you've got a good amount of lines there and you just keep overlapping and you want to see all those little lines spraying out from the center, you can mix a little bit more of a saturated color. So that just means a little bit more green, maybe a touch of red just to darken it. But you just want more of that Everest dark emerald green kind of color. Okay, and when I'm making darker colors, I don't add quite as much water. I think I've already got enough happening in my palette already. So I've just layered paint in my brush and I'm just gonna tap in along my stem with the tip of my brush and just let that water go out and blend into my lines. And you can also pull a few, not as many as we had before, but just layer a few more over top. And you can keep doing this with even darker colors if you want to add just a little bit of green. And tap in a bit more of just straight green there. Layers the colors in and it looks really nice. Okay. So that's a pine branch. Okay, so now I can show you some berries. Um, so what I'm going to do, I'm going to, I always use tend to use just colors that are already existing on my palette and add and move things around. So you're not really wiping away and wasting too much paint. So I'm just gonna use some of this green that I have. And over Steph, here in this corner, I'm just adding some red to it to make Steph, that speaking green of, color. Speaking of using the colors on your palette, someone asked if you recommend keeping the wells of the swatches instead of scooping them off in between, because it's hard to get those same mixes again. 
So yeah, I, so I'm yes, I, I definitely say keep the one. I mean, when I'm painting, you don't have to be super concerned about getting the exact same color again, because I'm adding so many colors. It's okay if things are different. But yes, on my own practice, like I'm, I wiped it away. So it was easier for you guys to see. But on the videos that I do in my workbooks, you'll see that I just add colors directly to my palette. And um, I just work with what's there. So if that's what these wells are great for, if you mix them in these different wells, you could go back to them. Yeah. And you wouldn't have to always wipe away. Um, and so for showing generally... you guys, this is a little bit bigger and easier for you to see. So that, that's good. Makes sense. Generally, yeah. do you use a, a bigger palette than this little round yes. one? Like so yes. So I have this square palette. Um, I don't have it right next to me to show you, but it's about the size of this. And you can also get these mixing trays, <laughs> which is just basically a big plastic square where you can mix all your colors and just let them dry and leave them. Um, and yeah, I usually have a few palettes going at the same time. So you could even get just a few of these and mix <laughs> different, different ones going at the same time. But yes, um, I always have sort of a bigger space to go from. Ceramic plates work great. You don't have to even buy palettes. Um, you can go to the dollar store and get some white ceramic plates and you're just as good. Um, okay, so this is like a brown for our berries. Um, so just for the stem. So we're making these berries here. So all I would do is I'm still using my size zero brush and I'd start with the stem. So again, we kind of make like this thin curved line and then I'll make a few smaller lines that just sort of swing out to the side. I'm not super exact with how long one is or how many on one side. I just want a few to spray out in different directions. You can always add more or cover them with berries. Um, it's all good. So I'm washing off my brush now and I'm just gonna go into my red. Now you could use just the red right from the tube, but you can also mix it in a little bit with your brown just to make it a deeper burgundy color like this. And when I'm doing berries, I tend to use a bit more paint. So I've kind of scooped a good amount into the center. So any, again, any more saturated, deeper color, you want to have more paint and not as much water added to it. So I've loaded up my brush and all you're going to do is create little circles with the tip. And you could just draw your little circles on the ends and maybe overlap some of them, some of the stems and just sort of Fill in the areas with your berries. I'm just gonna draw those circles. Sometimes I leave a tiny little fleck of white space in them. And that's just my way of showing that there's maybe a little bit of shine, but you don't have to do that. You can fill them right in. So I'm just making berries, overlapping my stem. Okay, that's pretty good. You can always add more branches of them. That's basically berries. Those are really fun to do. And now we can move on to a flower. The best part. So I'm, I am going to wipe away just so I can mix a new one for you and show you. Um, but for these little anemone flowers, um, these are really fun. We're just going to use our size six brush. And basically, we're going to create the base layer and make and build our shapes and connect them. So what I like to think about when I'm doing my flowers is the white space. So it's a little bit hard to see because I've layered in the center. But there's these little pockets of white space that I've left in my paintings. And those divide my petals so that it doesn't just look like this one circular blob. It kind of just defines them enough so that it looks like an actual flower shape. So I'm gonna show you how I do that. I'm gonna add a little more red here. Okay. And you're just gonna dip your size six brush or medium brush into your paint. So I'm gonna take a little bit of red and you can just use your plain red here. If you wanna make it darker, like a little bit more of that burgundy color, you can always add just the tiniest little bit of green and mix that in to make it a bit darker. Okay, so I'm adding enough water so that I can spread around like this. And how this is how I'm gonna create the flower. So I'm gonna use the shape of my brush to press down and make the shape of my petals. So 
I'm pressing down like this and curving like that and pulling up. And basically you can even just use the tip of your brush to sort of draw this circular, kind of like a teardrop shape almost. And that's the first petal that I'm working on right here. Okay. So then I'm going to go back to my mixture and I'm going to create this larger second petal. So basically I'm just going to go back to the bottom here of this petal and I'm going to run my brush along the edge and then just sort of spread it back and forth to create this circular shape. So I'm going back and forth. And using the shape of my brush to sort of even out that edges. I just need a little more water. And we'll spread down. Okay, so once I've sort of got a shape that I like, I'm just gonna go over my mixture with my brush and even it out so that as it dries, you're gonna have a nice solid area of red and you're not gonna get water lines. And if you see, because I ran my brush along that first petal, there's just those tiny, tiny little areas of white space. And that's divided the petal so that it looks like one's coming out this way and one's sort of on the side. And it just does it, they're connected, but they're not um, a big blob. So I just need a little more paint here. So I'm gonna add some more red to my middle mixture and that tiny, tiny bit of green on the end of my brush and mix that in. Some more red. Okay, so we've got those first two petals done, and then I'm going to work on this one here. So, same thing, I'm going to run my brush along the edge just like this. So, they're connected at the bottom, but then there's a little sort of space of white there, and I'm going to come down this way, just make another petal shape. Okay, so they don't have to look exactly the way that I'm doing this. I just want you to get the idea that these are sort of oval shapes and they're sort of circular in a way, right? They've kind of got these curves and that they're separated by slight areas of white. And the reason I've got this one, these two outer ones are a bit smaller and this one is larger is that when the flower is completed, it gives us this look that it's a bit on an angle, which is just kind of nice to add to your, to your paintings. So that's our second or third third petal. And then the last one, just load your brush. And in the middle, in between those two, these two petals, I'm just gonna create a little curve, kind of like an almond shape that connects to those petals there. Okay, so just spread your paint around over top. You can even layer over ones that you've already done to even them out and that's a nice red shape okay so now you can go back to your size zero brush and we're going to add the center details so I'm going to mix a little bit of red in a new well and a bit of green and you want to make it so that it's that kind of dark brownie burgundy kind of color you want to add about an even amount of green and red so that it becomes this really dark as dark a color as you can get it. Plus there's not really a lot of water. We're just mixing mostly the paint in there so that we get a really rich tone. And that's great for the center because anemones have those really dark sort of black looking centers. So that's a really dark color. It's not fully black, but it's, it's dark enough. I'm just adding a tiny touch of water so that I can spread it. And I'm just gonna go over top by adding little dots into the center of my flower and you can overlap some of your petals and just add these a bunch of little smushy dots into the center and they can overlap they can touch and that just gives us those center details okay and to make the finer final last um, anemone I just wanted to use a paler color so I'm moving on to my size six brush and I'm adding water to the red mixture that I already made so that it's paler. Okay. So the last one we're gonna create sort of from the front. So I'm doing the same thing again. I'm loading my brush and then I'm gonna go back and forth to make the petal shape. 
and like this. So I'm just sort of drawing it and then evening out, evening out the water. And then I'm gonna do the same thing with three more petals. So they're connected here. And then I'm just gonna work our way around in a circle, creating those petal shapes so that there's this white space here. And don't be con concerned, like I like these uneven edges, make the flower look a little bit more natural. You don't have to make them perfect circular shapes. Okay, so I'm just pulling in the paint so that it's a little bit closer in the center. And just move it around, evening out that water that's sitting on top of your shapes. Okay, so that's what I call the base layer. And now we can go into our tapping. So I'm just gonna go directly into my red paint, mix that on my brush and tap in just around the center of my anemone flower, just like this. And that's gonna create this nice color bleed as it's drying. And then I'm gonna move right into my size zero brush and into that brown color that I made and do the same thing again, create your little dots. And if you want to, you can touch them to the bottom of your petals and that's gonna create an even more of a color bleed into your flower. We didn't see that quite as much on this one because their petals were a bit more dry plus the red is darker so you don't see the bleed as much but it's really, really nice um, effect on your paler colored flowers. Okay, so then I'm just gonna fill in a bunch of dots in the center for the middle of our flower. Does anyone have questions or how are we doing? Uh, no, I think people are just concentrating painting their own flowers here because we're not getting okay. questions. Okay, good. <laughs> okay, so if you want to, you can also keep tapping. So I'm just going back to my red. If you want to, um, sometimes as your flowers are drying, they become, your colors just become a little bit more dull, the mixture. So you can just tap, keep, keep an eye on it as it's drying and tap that in um, if you want to add a little bit more layering to your pieces. Okay, so do we have time to do a little quick, put them all together or? Absolutely. Yeah, okay, because I, I totally screwed up with my technical difficulties. I don't want you guys to miss on, on stuff. Okay, so I'm gonna get a new page here and we're gonna put our flowers and leaves together. Okay, so we've got our palette. All right, so the first thing I usually start with is what I call the focal point. So you wanna choose one of your main flowers. And because I'm just doing a kind of a little tiny composition, maybe you just wanna pick one, either your light flower or your dark flower. And that's the, the main thing that you're looking at. So I'm just gonna start with my size six brush and I'm adding some water to make sure it's a really nice pale color. And I'm just gonna start here and make my little flower. So just like we did, we're going to go back and forth and make those four petals. If you have room for more petals, like don't feel like you have to just stick to four. You could always fit in an extra one if that works. And we're just going back and forth. So I work fairly quickly, and that's because I want to do my blending while this paint is still wet. Um, if you're finding that your paint is starting to dry on you before you can do your layering, just take some extra paint and layer on top again. Just keep going over your shapes and then you'll be able to, to tap in colors and have some of those bleeds happen without rushing yourself too much. Okay, so I've sort of got this shape of a flower that I like. And then I'm gonna go into my red and just use the tip of my brush to tap around the inside. Okay, and then go into your size zero brush into that brown that we made. And you can tap that in those little tiny dots around the center. Okay, so that's one flower and now we can move on to the second one. So I'm just gonna scoop a bunch of red into the center of my palette to make that deep burgundy color and then add a tiny bit of green to it. Running out of red. Okay, 
So make sure you have enough there. I'm gonna add some water to spread it around. And we're gonna start with our petals. So what I like to do when I'm connecting my flowers is I pick an area. So when I'm choosing my flowers together, I don't usually put them side by side exactly. I like to angle things a bit. So I'm just gonna put this flower slightly down towards the right hand side a little bit so that it's not super symmetrical. It's one of those things with, within the art world where you just kind of wanna use, think about angles and it's somehow more pleasing to the eye if it's not completely beside each other. Okay, so. I'm just going to swoop my brush and touch my other flower like this. So then we have to get this interesting color bleed happen. If you don't want that to happen, just separate your flowers. Don't touch the petal to the, to the wet one and that won't happen. But I like when those things happen. So that's why I did that. And you want to create your first petal like this. And then you're going to run your brush along the edge. And go back and forth creating that second larger petal. And you can use the pointed tip to just finish off those edges a little bit at the top. Okay. And just spread the paint around so it's nice and even. And then working on the last petal. So they're connected at the base and then they separate as I work out. like this and then our last one is that almond shape kind of at the bottom there okay so i'm just going to go over my flower and make sure it's nice and rich and red and then we can go back to our brown color maybe you need to mix a little bit more in there and i can just do my little dots for the center of the flower. Okay. So now we can mix, I'm just gonna take a little bit of this red out and we can do our pine. So I'm gonna mix a bit of green. We can take some of that brown and let's start with the brown. And you can just sort of, I usually like to connect my flowers a little bit. So I might put a few little branches in there so that they look like they're connected. Maybe stick one out just sort of go around your flowers and decide where you wanna put your, your branches. Um, I usually look to where there's a separation in petals and that's where I'll put a stem and the rest of my little leaves and things will grow out from there. So I'm going to my green, loading my brush and then we're just gonna do those little lines. And you can always add more of these in wherever you want, but it's nice to just put a few in first and then add some berries and then decide if you want to add any more. Okay. And then you can just tap in, you can add a little brown to your green here to make a darker green and just tap in some of those darker shadows. Add a few more of the branches in there. Okay, so actually I might put one real quick, one even lighter flower. I feel like I have room right here. So a lot of the times I'll do this. I just feel like there's room for one more. So I'm going to just add the same thing as this one. Steph, I think people could watch you paint all day. So take your time. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I just don't want to take up too much of your time. But yeah, so basically, oops. So look at me rush and then here we go. So if you have that happen to you where you drip some water on your paper, just take some paper towel and dab it up and you're good to go. Okay, so I'm going back to my red and I'm just my really pale pinky red and I'm just adding one more flower in. Normally it's another art rule is try to think about rules of three. It is really nice. Um, it's not, you know, rules are meant to be broken, but 
sometimes when you're creating your your little compositions it's nice when you see a grouping and three looks really nice together it's one of those things that's also really pleasing to the eye so there's our, no our other anemone and we can just layer in a little bit of red around the outside or the inside white space and then again back to our brown to add our little dots okay now we don't want this floating white space here in between our flowers because then it just looks like they're floating where we want it to look like they're actually in an arrangement somehow. So I'm just going back to my green and I'm just, you don't even have to worry about what you're doing. You just want to fill in some of that space with a few greenery lines. And that gives us the impression that they're all sort of stuck into an arrangement and into a bouquet. They're not floating in space. Okay, so there we go. And now let's add some berries in. So I'm going to go back to my brown and wherever you feel like you want to add them. Let's add a few lines here. Maybe some of them will come down this way. So I'm just adding my little stems in and we can always add more later. That's a good starting off. Point. Okay, so then I'm going back to my red. I'm just mixing that a little bit in with my green so it's dark and we can do our berries. So berries are like the best thing, especially for holiday stuff. Nothing makes it look more like Christmassy than adding some little red berries into things. And you could do just a little card with berries along the top or something like that it would be really, really cute. And always pairs nicely with your, your guys' lettering. Okay, and I think our final book, I did a few different kinds of berries. There's holly berries, there's typericum berries, um, Juniper berries. So there's a few different kinds. I really love berries. But the juniper ones are so pretty. Yeah, because I love those because they're kind of a blue color. So they're really nice for mixing with different like blue and red can actually be a really nice Christmas composition too. Um, but like it'll go with other things like you can add them in any time of year and they'll be pretty. Uh, okay, so add some more red here. So for those of you listening, if you have questions, now would be a good time to put them in the comments while Steph still has her camera on her hands so she could demonstrate yeah. if you had anything you're struggling with. Okay, so I'm just, now that I'm looking at my piece, I'm just going to add a few more little wispy lines for some more pine that's sort of just behind these berries. And that's what's great too. You can just kind of add those little pieces in at the end. You don't even have to do a stem, just a few extra ones there. It looks really nice. I think we're good. So pretty. Make it look so yeah. simple. <laughs> <laughs> it's not though, right guys? Like it takes practice, but the actual concepts are simple. Like we're really just making simple shapes. Um, but yeah, yeah. Hope you guys had fun. I did. Steph, do you, I could do this all day. Do you have a way of, would you maybe be able to hold up your paper close to the camera and just show us how you get the berry like really close up? Because someone's saying she's having a hard time. She or he, I can't see the name on here, is having a hard time getting the berries round with the brush. Oh, okay. So mine are not completely round and it's totally okay. We're just sort of making those little blob shapes. Like I'm, I'm never really concerned about making it super round. What you can do, if you do want it to be super round, you can use the end of your brush or get like a really fine, fine brush and you can use the end. They're gonna be bigger, but you can just dab it like this with the end of your brush and you'll get more of a circle than if you were just drawing it with the tip. But I'm never too concerned about making it entirely perfectly round that's just the way I work I don't I think it's just as effective to have sort of an imperfect shape um, but that's up to you that's just a method you can do if you want something round that's reassuring <laughs> yeah <laughs> hopefully um, that helps 
Someone else is asking if you have any tips for layering flowers. Yes, like when they're dry or? Uh, I don't know, that's that's all that came up with the question. So yeah, if whoever asked flowers. that question, if you can clarify your question, but yeah, if you have any tips on well, that. Well, I can talk a little bit about layering. So um, I didn't talk about that because we didn't really have time to wait for layering in this class, um, but watercolor, because it is so transparent, let's see, this is dry now, right? Okay, so this flower is dry. So you can layer colors. So let's um, let's make another red here. So say we were overlapping flowers, you could overlap and because watercolor is transparent, more so when it's pale, right? You won't see it as much if the color is deep like this. But when you're working with pale colors, you can overlap and you'll see some of those petals underneath. Um, so the, the trick with layering is waiting for things to dry. So if you do this while it's still wet, your colors are just going to bleed into each other and you'll just have kind of a big mess on your paper. You really have to be patient and wait for things to dry completely before you layer over top or it's going to be a bit tricky for you. You can use a hairdryer or like um, a heat gun or something if you have to sort of speed up the drying process. The only reason I don't use those um, is because it kind of can push the paint and the water around on your paper and then it, things aren't going to dry as evenly. It kind of, you might get more of these water lines, you might have weird looking um, blends. So you just want to be a little bit careful when you're, if you are going to kind of go that route and speed things up with a hairdryer or something like that. Um, so that's layering. You can also, here, let's add the center. But it is kind of nice, like you could do a whole composition and actually Beck and I have um, a free course that's a seven day course where I do cover layering um, and you can see a bit more about how to layer transparent colors. Um, I don't do it as much in my work. I really like to just sort of be more immediate and do things as they are um, but you can do a lot of really fun stuff for with layering like you could do lots of different pale flowers and layering petals or um, greenery with leaves would work really nice too. Yeah, and Steph, you had just mentioned our free course, so mm -hmm. I'm going to put the link to that on the screen, but um, for anybody who's watching, just so you know, if you enroll in any of the paid workbooks that we're going to talk about in a minute, you get automatically enrolled in the free course as well, so it goes over all these basics, and you definitely will be equipped with all of the information you need before you start painting flowers, so um, yeah. you don't necessarily have to go sign up for that right now if you're planning on buying a workbook anyway because you'll get it automatically. Mm -hmm. It is really good though for even just expanding on some of these things that I talked about especially color mixing which um, can take like it just is really good to get to know your palette to make a color chart and some things like this which you do in the free class and it'll help you with um, going with flowers going forward so yeah. For sure. Um, one more question. We had mm. someone ask if you could mix that brown color again. So maybe if you could sure. do it like closer up to the camera, just hold it up to the camera and do it that sure. way. Sure. Let me just get a little more red and green on my palette here. So normally I do have more colors on my palette. So making some of these would be a little bit easier because you could add a different color in to really make it dark. But this is what we do. Okay. So wet your brush and I'm just gonna do it in the center. You wanna get a scoop of color because it's a bit of a darker one. So you want a bit more paint. So I'm adding that to the center. And you wanna add generally like sort of the same amount of green. We'll start with that and then see how it looks. Okay, so that's kind of, that's a brown for sure. But if we want it more of like a red brown, you add more red to it, you can just keep adding color until it gets darker. So then I've add, that's more green, more red. So I just go back and forth between them, adding little bits of it at a time. And then it kind of changes as I go, but also, as you're painting, like, don't worry if the brown of this stem looks different than the brown of that stem, because in nature, things like depending on where it is on the branch or different lighting, it's not always going to be the same. So you don't have to be, you know, I had this exact amount of red and this exact amount of green. As long as it mostly looks similar, you're good. 
Um, so yeah, hopefully that works. I just go back and forth a lot until I really find that color that I'm looking for. And then to spread it, you'd probably need a little bit more water, just like that. Okay. Awesome. Um, another good question. We have someone asking, uh, they say they always have issues with composition and they have to draw it out first. Do you recommend mm -hmm. certain pencils so you don't need to erase the lines or how do you deal with pencil lines? Um, so what I do with pencil lines, I do just a regular like school HB pencil is totally fine. Um, I do use like a gum eraser. Gosh, I wish I had one right. I have in the supply guide for a book. It's there and I can also show you guys, but any eraser will do. But anything that doesn't have a lot of color on it, so it won't color your paper, just be kind of like look for something that's white or, you know, that won't smudge. Um, so what I do with pencil lines, yes, I don't sketch very much anymore because I kind of plan it in my head as I'm going and that's the way I do, but there's no harm in sketching it out first. If you're using like a dark flower like this, you it'll cover the pencil line if you overlap it and you won't really see it, so that's fine. But if you're using a lot of pale colors, um, you can sort of plan out what you're going to do so you know where your, your flower is going to be and maybe paint some of the elements around it then erase your flower line and then paint your flower. Um, because once once your paint covers your pencil line, it seals the pencil and you won't be able to erase that pencil line. Um, so I like to erase it beforehand. You can, what I often do too, is I'll make a practice. So I've, if you're struggling with composition, maybe you'll have one of your scrap pieces of paper. You can paint each element. So maybe I paint each flower, cut it out and then use the pieces and arrange them into how I want it to look and then take a picture of it or leave that over to the side and then I can recreate my painting depending on how I've arranged those pieces. Um, so I work with cutouts a lot like I'll, I'll use my flowers and sort of play around with them. You can um, draw, you can paint just a whole example and then um, copy from it so that you've got your practice sitting in front of you and you know exactly how you want it to look and then you can make your good copy sort of just following what you did the first time. That's um, but genius. lots of artists, I know you don't see it on Instagram, but lots of artists go through lots of paintings, like we don't do it perfect on the first try ever. <laughs> you know, everything is, you, you always have things that you want to change. So um, don't feel discouraged that, you know, composition is one of those things that you just always are keeping working towards. Yeah. Um, yeah. And nobody does it perfect right away. Love it. Um, yeah. Someone else asked what kind of watercolor and brushes those are and just we touched on that at the beginning of the video so mm -hmm. when this is available for replay you'll be able to go back and watch them again. Mm -hmm. um, and then doo -doo -doo. I'm just seeing if there's any other questions here. Okay, I think most of them are relevant if they go back and um, rewatch the video afterwards. So we'll okay. stay away from those ones. And uh, I think now it's probably safe for you to put your face back on video, Steph. <laughs> okay, all right. <laughs> okay, just give me one second because I have to shimmy out of this little situation that I've got myself in with my tripod. So for all of you watching, I hope you enjoyed that and we would love to see your creations if you are following along live. Um, even if you think that they're not up to par, we would love to see them because Honestly, anything in watercolor looks pretty. <laughs> so after yeah. this is finished, um, you'll be able to post your pictures in the comments and we'll be able to see them. And Steph can see them because she's in the Facebook group too. Um, but I think for now, we should just talk about the new workbook. Okay, perfect. So... Yes, um, um do you want me to just talk about it? Do you have a question? <laughs> well, I have I have it printed out. And um, I think there are probably people who have joined since we announced this at the beginning. So we talked about it a little bit at the beginning. But if you joined after we talked about it, um, Steph has just released a new holiday floral workbook. So we did a couple flowers in that live video. But this one has 16 different, I think it's 16. Different. Yeah, 16, yeah different florals and I'll show you some of them in a second and then she shows us how to put it all together into a beautiful wreath and then there are actually also a couple bonuses in there for and you know what Steph the bonuses are my favorite part like the layout Me too. <laughs> the compositions <laughs> Me of too. those bonuses are so beautiful I like yeah. I am so excited to paint somebody a holiday card and just use those. Oh, um, okay. So I'll show them to everybody in a second. But yeah, so you get uh, the workbook has all those flowers and step by step, just like we just did in the video, she'll walk you through how to do every step of it. 
um, and then putting it into different compositions. And so um, we have videos to go with each one. And uh, if you enjoyed the way Steph broke everything down step by step here, it's, it's the exact same. Um, and like we said at the beginning too, there are three different workbooks and two of them we have already um, done with a lot of people in this group earlier and they're not holiday inspired. And then this third one is holiday inspired. So all three of them are on sale for 50% off, which means they're under $20 and mm -hmm. um, even cheaper if you're in the US. So they're 1950 Canadian, which I don't know what that works out to in US dollars, but I imagine it's like less than 15 bucks. Yeah. Um, and that includes the workbook that you could either print or not print. You could just have it digitally. And then it also includes all the walkthrough videos and everything like that. So um, yeah, all three of them are on sale for 1950 um, until Sunday at midnight. And I'm gonna send out an email to everybody about this afterwards, showing you all the flowers that you're gonna create and telling you all the information you need to know. But um, if anybody has questions about it, you can toss it in the comments right now and we'll answer them. Um, I saw that somebody asked if this is gonna be uh, for the iPad as well, which we've done in previous floral workbooks. And uh, we've been in talks with Karen from iPad lettering and it may be happening. It's not up yet, but um, keep your eyes peeled and I'll send out an email, of course, if it becomes available. We're hoping to get it available for the iPad. But as of right now, it's just, um, it's just the regular format. Yeah. Um, yeah. So was there anything you wanted to add to that stuff before I kind of show people what's inside? I think you really covered it. But I think that's good. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So everybody keep in mind that my printer is garbage and the color on it is bad, <laughs> but I printed out the workbook. And so this is the cover of it and it should look gold. My printer made it look like mustard color, but it should, it should look gold. Um, it's gold. And then you have a, an introduction page and like even just the florals on the introduction page, like, come on. So good. Yeah, so, so good. I tried, what I really wanted you guys just to say, um, I, I wanted you guys to um, take some inspiration. So it, everything's broken down individually so that the bonuses are just inspiration for you. You can you can put those pieces together any way you like. So, you know, you don't have to copy exactly what I do. You have the pieces to put them together in a million different ways. So you can well, really um, use it over and over again. And I love the comment you made about cutting out your individual pieces and sticking them together. Mm -hmm. I think a lot of people liked that. I saw some comments about how you do that. And yeah. I had never thought about doing it that way. But when you have the whole workbook broken down by pieces like this, it makes so much sense. Yeah. Because once you've painted yeah. all of them, you can make your own compositions. Yeah. So, exactly. um, so the flowers that are in here, you have a magnolia, and that's not necessarily a holiday flower, but it's in holiday inspired, and the colors of it will look mm -hmm. beautiful with the rest of the holiday stuff. So you've got them, uh, and then you have a rose. And Steph, I don't know how to pronounce this next one. Hella, hellebore. Oh, um, hellebore. It's basically <laughs> it's called a Christmas rose. Um, and they have, it's like, there's really, really pretty. There's a million different options of them. Um, but they're, yeah, so. um, if you want to learn about layering, that's actually a really good one that we do layering for. So, um, it's how layer to layer different textures on the surface of the flower to create different effects. Like if you see an orchid or something where it has all those spots on it, things like that, mm -hmm. the hellebore is like, it's a really good one for layering. So yeah, there's a bunch of different versions of that. This is maybe my favorite one. The sea holly. Yeah, like the thistle. Yeah. Oh, so pretty. Yeah. And it's really hard to see the colors, you guys, but that's blue. It's like a really pretty blue. <laughs> I, I just, my we, printer is we terrible. We have digital pictures of it, so you'll see what it looks like in real color, too. <laughs> yeah. Um, and then this one also, juniper berries. So now we're getting into some of the actual, like, holiday mistletoe. Mm hmm Um some berries that we went over today. And then we've got holly. That's another one with layering that we do, so yeah. Oh my gosh, it's hard to turn these pages. Ivy, which is very classic holiday inspired. Mm -hmm. What's this one called again? Cedar. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I should know this. Cedar. No, it's fine. But greenery is so huge, like for Christmas, you could just mix a bunch of greenery and berries and it like makes the nicest composition. So I love know, the pine. What's this that? One. The pine. I love this one. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. 
Um, and then the cutest little pine cone. <laughs> like, so awesome. So those are all the different pieces, 16 different florals. And then Steph walks us through step-by-step step how to put it together into this really pretty wreath. Mm -hmm. And um, so this is like the final project after you've learned all those flowers. But like I said, the um, the bonuses that come after that are almost even the better part. So um, yeah. I don't have them printed out, but I have a picture on my computer. So I'm going to see if this will let me point my camera at the screen so that I can show you these because <laughs> they're so good. Okay. Yeah, so I really wanted to make them something that you could really partner with your lettering. So they're really great with like wreaths or borders or something where it really lends space in your picture for just finishing it off with lettering. So it's like the embellishment to work with your lettering. So here's yeah. one. So pretty. And then here's another one. This is my favorite one. This is so beautiful. I really hope you guys can see what that looks like in the camera because I'm just pointing my camera right at my computer screen. And then this one, which would be like a border on a whole card, mm -hmm. which is gorgeous too. And I, I think that one, like even though there's no red in it, it still looks really holiday inspired, which I love. Yeah. It's not like your traditional yeah. red and green. Yeah, I wanted to show you guys something different. So like it's still holiday, but if you wanted to work with like say just golds and greenery or something like that, it can be really more neutral and still really holiday and pretty. I love it. Okay, yeah. so I want to just see if there's any um, comments here before we move on. Yeah, so someone asked, someone said they already bought the fall florals from Stephanie directly. Is that one of the workbooks? And someone else asked about your holiday florals workbook. So just to clarify for anybody who's wondering about the workbooks that are on my website. So if you're watching the live video right now, there's a link in the um, comments, not the, not the comments that you're writing in, but the like the caption of this video has a clickable link and that will bring you to all three workbooks that are sold by Stephanie and I together. And so one walks mm -hmm. you through how to make a floral bouquet. One walks you through how to make floral monograms, which is really great if you're into lettering. So it's how to actually draw the letter and then fill it in with pretty florals. And yeah. those are two that we've done in the past. And then today we added the holiday workbook. So all three of those are on sale until Sunday at midnight. And the mm -hmm. ones that are on Stephanie's website are totally different and they're not included in uh, what we're talking about right now. So hopefully yeah. that, that clarifies things because I know there are a couple different versions. But again, if you yeah. go to the link in the caption uh, right now, that, that's, that will bring you to all three. And um, for those of you who have already bought the first two that we've done in previous um, Show Me Your Florals times, um, mm -hmm. you won't need to buy those again. They haven't changed. It's only the, the holiday one that's new. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, and then the link for just the holiday workbook is on the screen right now, if you want to go directly to that one. Mm -hmm. But um, I think, I think other than that stuff, we've answered the questions. Yeah, I think so. I think we're good. <laughs> Thank you so much for hosting the this live lesson. I think even for people who aren't ready to move on to florals, just that basic introduction makes watercolor a little bit less scary. Yeah, totally. I, owned, yeah. I understand that it's a little intimidating and, you know, you've never held a brush before. Like, what do I do? But yeah. Yeah. It's really and just and just a reminder to anybody who's watching, too, that wants to buy any of those workbooks, you get automatically enrolled in the Show Me Your Florals basic course, too, when you buy any of those, which is like mm -hmm. all the stuff we did today, except more in depth. So how to make a color chart and how to do blending and how to choose your colors and your supplies and all that stuff is all included. So don't worry mm -hmm. about it. If you're just getting started with watercolor, it's totally appropriate. You don't have to have any experience with it. And Steph walks you through everything. Yeah. And I'm always here for questions too. Like people send me direct messages, like emails that it doesn't bother me. Like I love to hear from you guys. So if you have questions for me that we didn't get to today, um, you can always let me know and I'm happy to help. So. Awesome. Well, yeah. I think that, uh, I think other than that, we're, we're good to wrap up. Okay. <laughs> so thanks again for doing this and, uh, and I'm sure we'll come on live again in the next week or so talking about this so that people don't miss out on the the deal. Sure. Yeah, that sounds great. All righty. Well, okay, thanks, well, everybody. Thanks, Becca. Thanks, Steph. <laughs> Bye. Thanks.